Hey guys, Darth Thork here, back with part four of our If My Heart Had Wings playthrough. So last time, we, uh, things got a little more real. Uh, the plot started to develop in earnest. Uh, Ageha and Aoi have officially joined the Soaring Club with Amane in an effort to save it. It needs four members, and we're trying to twist Kato K Katori's arm into joining two, even though she deep down she super duper wants to. But she feels like she would be a pain, or whatever her reasoning is. And uh, we, they're trying to twist her arm to get her to join. So that's what's going down. Now, as usual, I do have a juice in front of me. And if you're interested, today's fact, real fact, number 1222. I love the uh, matching numbers there. Venus is the only planet to rotate clockwise. Now you know. Got some delicious apple juice. My work today work was off was not fun not awful awful is an exaggeration it, there is some my job is kind of is fairly stressful if you let it get to you because it's all about timing it's all about windows of, of pickup windows of pickup or whatever so if you miss a window you're in deep deep trouble and so I did not miss I haven't missed anything so far but it's all very very precise and so it's kind of high stress if you let it get to you and so it's a little bit rough and plus with my eternal lethargic state I've been in for like six months. It makes it really, really rough when I already had no energy. And then now I have, like, turbo no energy after it's over. So, anyway, I'm happy that today's my Thursday. Tomorrow is my is my Friday, but it is early, and it's delivery. So it's a different side of things than I normally work on. So a little nervous about that, but it's, it's the same thing I do now. It's just I don't have a window. I can just deliver it, you know? So it's like it should be, in theory, easier. I'm a little... I'm a little sad that i have to get up so early because it's in the morning normally i work in the afternoon so it's it's bright and early i have to be there at 8 10 and so i need to be up i'll probably need to get up sometime in the seven o'clock hour so that sucks because that's like three hours n earlier than i normally wake up now I'm, that does not mean i'm gonna go to bed today any sooner because i can't just make myself go to bed any sooner so i'll just lay in bed awake if i tried so you know all, that just means less sleep for me anyway so it sucks and I am a little bit sad about it, because that's my normal schedule, from what I understand. Not that I was warned about that in my interview, because I wasn't, but whatever. I'm sure it's fine. Anyway, enough griping by me. I uh, Enough griping by me. I am tired. I am trying to shake off the post-work stress, because today there was a couple things in work that did not go smoothly that I was hoping would have. And so I'm a little... We're trying to get past that, and hopefully I can make some decent commentary. Although... Luckily for us, uh, this job is lots of reading, so there's less less commentary for me needed, so that'll help a long way, I imagine. Anyway, whew, I've started to sweat. Said Ageha as she put the baggage down on the grass. But there's a breeze here, which feels good. Today is dry and sunny, and the temperature isn't that high. It's quite hot in the sunlight, but there's a nice breeze. Here, I throw a sports drink to Ageha. Oh. Thank you. Gatorade is what I imagine that is that basically constitutes as Gatorade. Oh, thanks. There's one for you too, Katori. I take some orange juice from the convenience store bag and pass it to Katori. Arigato. Thanks. You want to sit down here? Uh, um. Agaha, give me a hand, would you? Agaha, who looks like she's enjoying her sports drink, gets up and comes over. What are you doing? I want to put you down here. There's no need. Oh, I see. I leave lifting up Katori to Agaha and tell her how to do it while I give her a hand from the side. Okay, here we go. Whew. Thanks. Katori sits down on the grass and looks comfortable as she stretches her back. Oh, my butt was getting a bit hot. It seems that wheelchairs can get quite hot in the summer. That makes sense. Okay, time for the lunch boxes. The time is now 12.30. It's exactly the time for lunch break. We spread out the lunch boxes that we brought and the juice and the snacks we bought from the convenience store. We don't have a sheet, but it feels just like we're having a picnic. Okay, let's eat. Okay. I had made mine and Katori's lunch boxes, and Agaha had brought her own. 
Oh, you got a burger, Katori. Hey, you want to trade it for my spring roll? Sure. Alright. Agahara looks like she's enjoying the burger that she got by trading, and she wolves it down. Oh, you're good at cooking, aren't you? It may makes me lose my confidence as a woman. Your mom's good at cooking, though, isn't she? No, no, I can't be compared to a career housewife. Katori's face seems to say that she wasn't really suited to, to this situation as he quietly ate her lunch. However, she didn't look as irritated as she was before. Agaha either hadn't noticed or she was pretending not to have noticed and carried on behaving the same way she always does. This is the first time I've skipped school. The only time I thought that I wanted to take a day off was on the day of the injection. But if you can hang out with your friends like this, maybe it's okay sometimes, said Agaha playfully. She seems quite excited about skipping school for the first time. If your mom finds out, she's totally going to kick your ass. <laughs> Agaha's mother doesn't hold back when she gives her daughters a kick in the ass. I've been kicked too many times, like when Agaha and I got caught playing tricks. Those tricks are big, heavy, and painful. That's why you can't tell her. Okay, I got it. She'd kick me too for something like this. I say that, but I don't want her to worry un unnecessarily. Hey, what's next? We all look at the notebook. We managed to finish five of them this morning. As for pedigree, the Itos recognized Ageha, and they led us into the garden. We weren't able to have her ride on his back, but Katori gave Pedigree a hug, and so that counted that we counted that as a success. In the end, it was quite tough for her to roll around and play with him. Pedigree probably weighs more probably weighs more than Katori. On top of that, he licked her all over her face, and she looked like she was full of emotion. Cafe Go to Cafe Flags. Uh, Agaha reads out from the list. Where is that? It's over there in Windy. So, I don't need to go there. Katori, who had suddenly gone red, drew a line through that entry with a red pen. Agaha whispers into her ear. Is there someone you want to go there with? No, it's just your misunderstanding. I'm like, just silent. Something was said to Katori, and now she's desperately trying to cover something up. What could it be? It's quite a grown-up cafe. It's run by a famous person who makes pastries, I imagine, and has delicious sweets. You want to go there? I said no. It was just a misunderstanding. I just heard someone talking about it from talking about it at school, so I thought it sounded good, that's all. I didn't know about that kind of place. Was it like a strip club paint like pastry place? Like what if what kind of place is it? What kind of that kind of place? It's not just a normal cafe? It's aimed at couples, so there are tons of customers like that. The young women in Kazagura go there on dates, so going there is a kind of status symbol. I really didn't know about it. Katori points at me. She's uh, strongly denying it, but it's not like I really have any suspicions about it. Why don't you go there with Aoi? What, 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 what are you talking about? It sounded like I had a stutter, but that time it was on purpose. Uh, I didn't write anything about that. Uh, Katori had gone red and was looking down. Well, I don't mind. Is that place expensive? The cakes are about 800 yen per piece. The tea is about the same price. That is, that is quite steep. That is a little steep. The homemade something or other is one of the most popular things on the menu and is really delicious, apparently. That's 1300 yen. For one cake? 
I guess it is the same place as the supermarket that sells high-grade marbled meat for $29.80 for 100 grams. So he really cannot let that go. For doing the work of the door mother, I can get a small allowance from my mom, so... Next month I'll be okay. I just told you, I don't need to go. I just heard from someone that it's a trendy shop that sells delicious cakes and tea. As for going there on a date with a boy, I never said I wanted to do that. I never said it. It must be important because she said it twice. I was overwhelmed by her vigor and nodded in agreement without saying anything. Alright, that's the end of that conversation. As she one-sidedly dropped that subject, she used the pen to thoroughly blot out the entry. There we go. It might have bled through to the other side of the page. Aoi, you look a little disappointed, don't you? Huh? No, I don't. You have a sweet tooth, don't you? Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't get disappointed about something like that. Besides, did I really look disappointed? Agaha cleared away the lunch boxes and opened a bag of snacks. We bought a lot because it felt like we were going we were going on an excursion. While Agaha eats some sort of snack, she takes another look at the notebook after Katori had finished blotting it out. Speaking of which, we were in the middle of talking about what to do next. Hey, what's that? Agaha was looking at the entry at the number one spot on the list. It was written much bigger than the other entries. It wa I want to pass to pass through the passage out passage of cloud. I want to pass through the passage of cloud. I, my, my brain just did not pick up on that. Yeah, I thought that was quite mysterious too. What is that? I mean, probably she's saying she's probably saying she wants to fly in the glider. It's probably what that means. So. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I'm not the one who wrote this. What do you mean you're not the one? That, this is is this your list? No, well, that's just confusing. Did she just pick up someone else's bucket list? Answered Katori while crunching the, on the snacks that Agaha had given her. Now that she mentions it, the handwriting is different. Eat as much haagen as I want, and so on are written in nice, uniform writing. Compared to the meticulously neat handwriting, I want to pass through the passage of cloud was written in a way that screamed bold and spirited. So what? She so she just she just wrote the rest of them, but didn't write number one, I guess. Anyway, it's like a, it's like a a, bu a joint bucket list. <laughs> anyway, so who wrote it? The owner of the notebook. It was already written in here when I found it. There are a few entries written in this unbridled fashion, and below are the neatly written entries. See, I, I'm wondering now if, uh, oh, I guess that's probably number one, and then that's the rest of them. Anyway, I wonder if, uh, like, this, if that number one entry either belongs to either Amane, but my number one guess, I think it might belong to this other person that Amane mentioned. Like, uh, it, like, it started with an I. It's like Itsuko or something. I don't remember, I don't remember the name, but it started with an I, and it was something that Amane mentioned, and if memory serves, Katori reacted. Like she knew the name, and so I'm thinking that number one belongs to that that other person, the person whose name starts with I, that Amane knew, and and Katori might know, and I think there's a connection there. Regardless, though, uh, there are a few entries written in this. Un oh, I think we already read that. Katori has added to it, continuing from what someone else has written. You found it. What do you mean? I came. I found it in my room when I came to Flying Fish Manor. It was hidden in a gap between the shelves. So this isn't your notebook then? That's right. Maybe it's the diary of someone who lived there before. When she says that it's a diary, I feel hesitant to just go ahead and open it. Had Katori read it? Does that mean you continued to write in someone's diary? Without thinking, Agaha and both made a face like, why, while Katori remained quiet. I don't think that it's because it would be a shame to waste the unused pages. The thing that I was more concerned with was, I want to pass through the passage of cloud. What is a passage of cloud? I'm assuming clouds. I mean, well, on top of that, the um, Amane was mentioning that that other person that she knew, like, spoke of, like, you know, there's only a place that the glider can go or whatever. So it's like, I imagine it's probably related, regardless. What if what if it's clouds we're talking about? Well, it's cloud is in the, is in the sentence, so I imagine. 
I look up. There is a blue sky and a few clouds, then a giant windmill. The windmill blades moving around slowly in the wind take a lo look a lot like the wings of a glider. Okay then, next is donate blood. Why is that on your list? Let's all go and have our blood taken. Why is that on your list? I've given blood once or twice. I've given I've given blood a couple times. It's not very exciting. I'll tell you what though, I have given the I think I gave blood like went to like a blood drive place once that I remember for sure. And uh, I mean like as far as like donating blood, like I've had blood drawn several times, but going to have blood taken, you know what I mean? A lot, lot like donating blood. You know, I've done that once and they like <laughs> They will hound you. <laughs> so I have, I think it's like O type. It's like the kind that I can give my blood to anybody. It's like what, it's like, the, I think it's O. It's like O positive or negative. I don't remember which one. But I have the one that I can give my blood to anybody. And I think it's O something. And uh, the, the blood drive people hounded me for years after I gave blood the first time. Because they're like, they wanted so bad to have my O type blood or whatever. And I'm just like, but I don't want to get stuck by needles, man. But anyway, I digress. But regardless... It's, uh, it's not that fun of an experience. Whew, that last one was a bit of a toughie. My eyes are still flickering. The last thing we did was complete Lady and Silver Gun. Final entry on the list. If you're wondering what that is, it's a shoot 'em up game, and until just now we were in it, we were at the video game arcade, where we finally completed it by repeatedly using continues and taking turns. Because it was so hard, it made getting to the ending all the more impressive. Wow, it's a real masterpiece, isn't it? It, I'm no good at shoot 'em ups. The best of this game was Agaha, then Katori. It seemed that Katori had played it from time to time when she skipped school before. She must have gotten mad with the incredible difficulty of the game and said, One day I will complete this game, and added that entry to the notebook, it seems. We had to spend 3,000 yen to complete it. Does that mean we've cleared everything on the list? Yeah. We've also finished the entries that Katori hadn't written while we were at it. The only one left was passed through the passage of clouds. Since we didn't know what that meant, we had virtually cleared the whole list. Now that we finished it, does it doesn't it feel like we all it all ended a bit too quickly? I'm glad we finished before dinner. Yeah, you're right. If we want to hang out, we should do it again some other day. Katori is silent. What's up? No, no, no. Nothing. Katori's expression seems dark. The same as Agaha, it looks like she feels unexpectedly disappointed now that it's all over, like it wasn't enough. <clears throat> Alright, I'm hungry. I think I'd better head back now. Hopefully your mom won't find out about this. It's okay. Uh, our homeroom teacher isn't that diligent. But Hotaru is quite serious. If she realizes that you hadn't gone to school, she might tell your mom, right? If that happens, I'm taking you down with me. Uh, what? How could you? Are you, are you going to tell on me? It's been five years. You should go and get a kick in the butt from my mom. She said jokingly and turned to face Katori. Thanks for today. Thanks to you, Katori, I had a really good time. Yeah. Okay, see you tomorrow. She said with a smile and turned to leave. With a spring in her step, she walked up the gentle slope. Katori went to say something and as Agaha stopped, so Agaha stopped walking. Just say thank you, Katori. Katori looked down and faltered as she spoke. This time she looked like she was about to cry. Agaha waited for a little while for Katori to open her mouth. Patiently. However, Katori didn't say anymore. Hey, Katori. The truth is, I came around today because I had something I wanted to talk to you about. Let's be in the soaring club together. I heard it from Aoi. You know a lot about gliders, don't you? You always had fun when you went to the garage, didn't you? Yeah, 
If we're in the club together, it would definitely be great fun. Every every day would be like today. I'm sure of it, don't you think? Aga closed her mouth and waited for the for a reply. There was no mistake that Katori was in two minds. She was certainly interested in gliders, so I think she would actually really like to join the soaring club. That's why now she might be able to express those feelings. I said I wouldn't do it, didn't I? But why? Just because. It's got nothing to do with you. Agaha's expression dropped as Katori's blunt refusal. I know, she's being a brat about it. Why do you have to say it like that, I wonder? Because you're sticking your nose in. If you feel that way, don't you think that's why you don't get involved in class? This time, Katori seems irritated by Agaha's remark. Well, I don't blame her. She has, like, a... Uh, Agaha seems to have a pretty long fuse when it comes to real BS, and, like, Katori just, like, being so mean about it. Like, look, I get, like, if you have an ulterior reasons, but, like, you could even just say, I have reasons that I really, I'd really rather not get into. Like, stay polite about it, but when, but when you, like, rip someone's face off after they've been really nice to you, they're really not that interested in continuing to be nice a lot of the time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she, like, there's a, you know, you can have tact and decorum while still, like, getting what you wanted, you know what I mean? If you have a reason, just say so. But, like, don't be mean about it, because now Agaha's pissed, and I don't blame her. Anyway. Well, excuse me for not getting more involved. I don't go kissing up to be everyone's friend like a certain somebody, that's all. Ouch. Kissing up to people? Hold it, hold it, calm down, both of you. Why are you arguing all of a sudden? I step in so they can't ignore me. After we had such a fun day, let's just call it. Whoa! Agaha pushed me aside like I was in her way. It's no good. It looks like she's quite pissed off about the kissing up comment. Yeah, no kidding. I don't agree with the way everyone has behaved recently. Of course you would feel angry at them for speaking to you like that. However, I also think that you have some negative points. Like what? See, that's what I mean. Aga pointed her finger at Katori's face as if to say, there, there irrefutable evidence. Oh, I was waiting for more, sorry. Uh, you're always so, how should I say, defiant. That's why everyone misunderstands you. Like how we were hanging out today. Couldn't you have opened up a little? Thank you for your kindness. I never asked for it, though. You don't have to say it like that. You're really pissing me off. You really are kind. I know all about it. The reason why you've been speaking to me so much, it's because our teacher asked you to. <laughs> Faulting for a moment from hearing Katori's words, Agaha stayed tight-lipped. Her cheeks went red. <laughs> I... I... Or is the reason why you're being so kind to me because you feel sorry for me? I'm sick of being treated like that. Katori told her and turned her wheelchair sideways. Sayonara. Goodbye. Ah, hey! With that, she left by herself. Ageha. It's fine. Sorry, too fast. It's fine. What she said, it's all true. But that's not the but that's not the reason why you did it, though, is it? Aren't you also being misunderstood? Sorry, I'll go now. I mean, she is also being misunderstood. Agaha, this time looking like she didn't want to talk, with trembling shoulders, climbed the gentle slope. I watched her from behind as she left, and then hurried back to the dorm. Freaking yikes, dude. Well freaking done, Katori. Well freaking done. Sigh. Katori! Hey, Katori! Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Hat came out as if to protect, to, to protest about the noise. Hey, is your buddy in there? Get out of the way, will ya? I move Hat out of the way and take a sneak peek at Katori's room through the duck door. I like how it's called the duck door. Damn, Hat's in the way I can't see. Hey, you mustn't do that. Ah, Kaneko, has she come back yet? Hmm? It looks like she's still not back. Did something happen? Yeah, kinda. Um, can I ask you to prepare dinner? 
私が Me? Please? えー、嘘あちょっとあそれはやばいって You're joking, I can't do that うん言っちゃったよどうなっても知らないから Well, you're the one who asked me Don't blame me for whatever happens Sorry, Kanako, we're in the middle of a crisis I've had it with all of them. I've washed my hands of all of them. That's not what it looks like, though. I call out to her, but without surprise, Katori looks at me for a moment before quickly looking back at the lake. At night, the lake looks like a vast black mass of darkness lying sideways. On the other side of Windmill Hill, which looks beautiful when illuminated. Since she hasn't come back to the dorm, I guess that she might be here, and this is where I found her. What are you doing here? Self-assessment? I say it in a light-hearted way, but she doesn't answer. Let's go back. It's almost time for dinner. Katoria shook her head. You can't stay here, can you? No way. I don't want to go back. Why not? I don't want today to end. She mumbled quietly as her cheeks quivered for a moment. What do you mean? Oh, sorry. Again, I was waiting for more. If I go back to my room, it'll all be over. Today was so much fun, I don't want it to end. Other than the big fight at the end for no reason. It sounded like she was getting tearful. Gotta apologize to one of those friends, by the way. Sorry, I, I again, I thought she was done. It's been so long since I spent time with friends like this. Katori? Even so, it ended with an argument. Yeah, that's true. You can't you can't round off a day a fun day with an argument. For me too. Today was an unbelievably fun day. It was like going back to being a kid, playing stupid pranks from the morning until sunset. Right now, the thing that makes me feel a little pleased is the fact that I know what Katori feels the same way. I know that Katori feels the same way. About Ageha, I didn't see the things that happened in the class, so I can't really say, but. She's a simple person, so I don't think she would have she w could have done what the teacher asked if she didn't want to. Mm. Yeah. However, even if she hadn't been asked, she's the type who would do it anyway. That sometimes causes problems, though, right? I said jokingly, and Katori smiled just a little. Mm. Yeah, I know. And today she wasn't asked to, but she skipped school. With, but she skipped school with us, didn't she? That, this was the first time she had skipped school and only stuck with us because of how things turned out. She's not a bad person. Maybe she really thinks that she wants to be your friend. That's what I think. Even Agaha wouldn't go this far just for the sake of being kind. That's true, man. Good points. My... Hmm? My legs became... Oh, sorry. Once again, I thought she was done. I still thought she was done. <laughs> okay, God. All right, God, sorry. Wait a very long time. My bad. Anyway, my legs became like this two years ago. Alright. <laughs> I like waited an extra second that time. I was in an accident when I was on vacation. Until then, I was just like you and her, walking around, running. I had lots of friends and I was in a sports club. I played volleyball. Really? I imagine Katori jumping up from the floor and launching an attack on, an, on the opponent's court. No doubt about it, she would have been brilliant. She would have been brilliant. Spectacular. Then, my legs were injured in the accident and now I wouldn't be able to live without a wheelchair. The school that I went to didn't have any elevators and there were steps all around the school. A step of as little as five centimeters is a huge obstacle for a wheelchair. Even going to school became a huge problem. The life that I had before the accident, going to eat hamburgers with everyone after school, going to buy clothes.
Those things that that most people take for granted. I couldn't do a single. I couldn't do a single one of them. When all of my friends, this time I'm waiting extra long because I'm nervous. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut her off again. Anyway, uh, when all of my friends that I was so close to realized everyone kept their distance, I guess that's obvious because we couldn't hang out together. That can't be true. If they were your friends, if they were your friends, they wouldn't care. They could still hang. They could still hang out with you. Saying that might just be oversimplifying things, though. Yeah, a lot of people are more shallow than that, unfortunately. At the very least, that is her actual experience of it. One time in homeroom, the teacher noticed that I was isolated from the others and said this. Kajori's been through so much. Let's all try to get along with her. I was really shocked. I didn't. I realized exactly the predicament I was in. Uh, there, see, I almost did it again. After that, I secretly cried by myself. I felt so frustrated, so pathetic. To have everyone being so careful around me, I hated it, but there was nothing I could do. Katori's hands were trembling as she held onto the hem of her skirt. It looked as though, looks like the frustration of that time had come back to haunt her. That's why I came here. The school has full wheelchair access, so I could go there by myself without inconveniencing everyone. Anyone. At our school, Katori can go there by herself and can get into and out of the classroom without anyone's help. But it was no good. A place like school, you just can't go there all by yourself. It's not just a physical problem. It's a social environment, and you can't get by without being involved with other people. Well, you should have looked at you should have seen my school experience. I went there by myself all the time, and uh, you you can get by without being involved with pretty much anyone else. So you know, I mean, it's definitely possible. Speaking from personal experience, it's total hell, and it's just like the worst environment in the world. And nothing killed my love of learning faster than school. But I'm just saying that it's possible you can physically be there, even if you're not mentally there, because God knows I was never mentally there. Anyway, not the point. Moving on. <laughs> As well as that, is the danger that I might get a puncture and won't be able to move, or that I can't get into the bath by myself. I'm just so tired of it all. She, mur she murmured as she spoke and looked across to Windmill Hill on the other bank. The composed forms of the giant windmills seem to have a calming effect on her. That would be pretty tiring, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, it definitely would be tiring. I have lots of sympathy for her. I mean, like, that sounds that sounds like the worst. So, I totally get it, but, you know, there's like... But the attitude side, you can like, you know... She could be friendlier with people that genuinely want to get to know her. I totally get being pissed and just like not being very sociable. Because, hey, I totally get that. So, I do have sympathy for her. I, I feel bad for her. It is, you know. Don't you think that I've tried really hard until now? I do. I agree from the bottom of my heart. I can't just say something simple like, try even harder. <laughs> no. Anyway, is the search for new members for the story club going well? No. It looks like we might be able to do something. I just hope we make it in time, though. I see. That's good. Why did, why did he lie? It's not going well at all. That weird senior, she's been doing her best all by herself this whole time, hasn't she? It would be terrible for her to have to stop halfway, wouldn't it? I'd like to try flying one day too, in that glider. Katori narrows her eyes as she speaks. She looks across to the sky above Windmill Hill. Hey, uh, hey you, uh, don't really want to quit school, do you? Oh, 
That's not it. My mom and dad are really worried about me, too. If I were to quit school and go back home, they'd be pleased. Katori smiled as she said that, but to me it looked like she was forcing herself to smile. I sat next to Katori and, just like her, looked at, looked at the view of the opposite bank. Before I came back to Kazagura, I was in the cycle racing club at a school really far from here. Ah, oh, they buried their souls, dude! Hell yeah! <laughs> when I started to speak, she glanced at me and didn't say anything while she listened to me. There are sports scholarships for that too, you know. I trained desperately every day so that I would be exempt from paying tuition fees and in order to win races. The practice was seriously tough, but riding the bike felt good, so it didn't really feel like that much hard work. Bicycle road races are incredibly tiring. In a big competition, you cycle 100 kilometers in a day. 100 kilometers? That's crazy. It is, isn't it? Also, you have to go over hills all the you have to go over hills on the way. Hill climbing is complete hell. While climbing, I always wanted to give up. But after climbing it, cycling down the hill feels amazing. Really? I couldn't tell if Katori was impressed or envious when she responded. That part is fun, so that's why I thought I'd try racing. In one competition, I came third. That's great. Was that a national competition? I nod with pride. Actually, this is one of the few things that I can that I can be proud of. Anchan came to watch. I was really happy about that. But then I got greedy. In the first race of the second year, I had an accident. While in the middle of a downhill section, I got involved with another bike that had fallen down, of all things. In that situation, I was competing with several other, several other bikes. I was in a hurry to get to the front and got too close to the other bike. Then, the accident occurred. The other bike suddenly lost its balance and I got tangled up with it, and I hit the asphalt while traveling at high speed. With a bitter smile, I roll up the leg of my pants on the right leg and show her. With the accident, my life as a racer ended all too soon. The scar from the surgery is still fresh. Katori looks at it and seems to be lost for words. If it were her, she would she would be able to say that she got away with just that just this scar. With re with rehabilitation, I was able to walk again, and now I have no problems with everyday life. And the doctor said so too. But I can't ride a bike anymore. Is that the reason why you quit your previous school? I nod quietly. I was a scholarship student, so it was hard for me to be to be there after I withdrew from school, but. I couldn't, I could have, I, but I could have stayed there. However, my friends in the cycling racing club were there, and I would watch them practicing. Was as I, while I watched them doing their best from afar, I was unable to live a normal life. My leg recovered after the rehab, but instead I felt really depressed. From what, that seems very normal to me. I thought that it would have been better if I couldn't move at all, because I, I could have just given up on it. It was painful and difficult, and I didn't know how to handle all of my unfocused thoughts. That's why I came back. I ran I ran away back to my hometown. Somehow, I felt a sense of relief, and I wrapped the story. Now that I think about it, this is the first time that I've spoken to Katori about this. I haven't even confided in Agaha and the others about this. Sometimes we feel like running away, right? There are many hardships in life that thing there are many there are more hardships in life than things that we can enjoy. Too freaking real. The things that Katori says to comfort me are actually really pessimistic. That must be how she really feels. Well, she's really right. <laughs> However, I didn't tell her that because I wanted to be comforted. There are still things that I want to say. There are some things that I realized from running away. There's nowhere else to go. There's nowhere left to run to. It's like a dead end, but I can't see the uh, the way forward either. There is a way. For you, there are other ways. I thought that I would regret it, running away, I mean. But it wasn't like that. My hometown is the same as it always was. It kindly welcomed me back. That's good, isn't it? That makes it even worse. The warmth of my hometown, it makes me forget my pain and impatience. It feels like I'm gradually being paralyzed. The pain, the importance of things I'd lost. I'm forgetting them little by little. If I lose that, will I still be me? You have something, the glider. Yeah. I'm excited to think that I could fly in it. I envision myself flying through the air as I look to the night sky. After that, Katori looks down. Do you have something like that? <gasps> something ahead of you if you quit school and go back to your hometown. Katori looks to me like she was in shock. 
She desperately tried to hold back the tears that were welling up and about to fall from her eyes. Don't say things like that. Something so cruel. Whether something lay ahead or not, I realized then that she had a deep conflict within, even more than I thought she had. You don't think there is anything ahead, do you? That's why, if you have nothing left to do, everything is over. No, that was just for fun. If you if you want a bath, I'll help you get in. If you want a puncture, I'll if you get a puncture, I'll fix it for you. I'll help you if you need it. So, a tear ran down Katori's cheek, but it was only a single tear. I don't want to be any more of a burden than I already am. Give back my Oops, oh, sorry, not done yet. Give back my withdrawal notice. Well, that didn't quite end up the way I was hoping, gonna be honest. <laughs> I went to get the withdrawal notice that I had stuck in the back of the drawer. So that's where you hit it. When I held the withdrawal notice in my hand, the terrible things that I had said to her came back to my mind. Do you have something like that? Something ahead of you if you quit school and go back to your hometown? I regret those words as I offer her the withdrawal notice. Well, I thought he was going somewhere else with that, not just to be like, haha, screw you. Like, I thought he was gonna be like, you know, you don't have anything to look forward to, but you could if you stayed. I thought that's where he was turning turning that into, and instead he just dropped it right there. And that was like not at all what how that should have ended. He what he definitely should have done is even keeping exactly with what he said, he should have said, you know, you might feel like everything's over, but it's not. Like you can have something. There is a future for you if you stay here with people that actually like you, that actually care about you, like me and like Ageha or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, uh, that's how I would have turned it. Like, you have it like, you know, being like, we will miss you if you leave. You know, you will be happier here. You know what I mean? Like, like that type of thing. But he just stopped it cold turkey right there. So it just, it sounds super hurtful. And like, <laughs> that was like, that was so stupid. <laughs> it's just like, ow, you're so dumb. Like, you could have done it better than that. I could have done it better than that. That's what, that's what I would have gone with that. Anyway, you dropped this, so I picked it up. Arigato. Thanks. However, Katori didn't take it straight away. For her to take that, it would be for her to decide her own future. But in the end, she reached out her hand. Huh? I quickly pulled it away, and she seemed embarrassed. I'm not going to do it. Hi? What? I'm not going to give it back. I held it onto it and left the room. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Welcome back. Dinner's ready. It was very... Oops, sorry. Too fast again. It was very popular. We still have a whole pot left. How about it? I walk up beside Kaneko so I make it look like I'm rummaging around the kitchen. What are you doing? Not long after, Katori came into the dining hall. Give my withdrawal notice back. Withdrawal notice? That's too bad. I've already hidden it somewhere else. What do you think you're doing? I won't accept it. Just give it another chance. Huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Feelings that the situation wasn't fair were bubbling up inside me. I know how Katori feels. It must have been incredibly difficult, and she makes and she makes me feel a pain in my chest just imagining it. So, uh, but it's only been ten days since I came here, and I feel like I want to do something for her. But it isn't the time that I have been given too short. I get it. I'm just being nosy. I totally get it. Why are you talking to yourself? Give it back. It's mine. No way. If you want it back, look for it yourself. You're so mean. What happened to the sad feelings you had? The nice story you were telling me just now. The hell if I know. God, you really are a meanie after all. I whistle badly and play dumb. Hey, Kanako. Yes. You saw where he hit it, didn't you? <laughs> Good guy, Kanako. She's coming in. She's coming in to back me up. Hmm, where was it now? Even if I knew, I wouldn't tell you. Hey, if you weren't here, Katori, I'd feel so sad. <laughs> Katori's face had gone red. Looks like her rage gauge has reached max. <laughs> Idiot, moron, knucklehead. I will still quit school without it. Firing off a few parting shots, Katori hurries off uh, out of the dining hall. 
dinner's ready. You can heat it up in the microwave later. The door at the end of the hallway closed with a slam. So where'd you hide it? I pulled the piece of paper out from under my shirt. Not bad. Thanks for your help. That's like... That's not how I thought that was gonna go. It's just like, what a rip, dude! He had the opportunity to make that way deeper. He had the opportunity to, like, to ratchet it up a notch, you know? But he just, like, he's just like, nah. <laughs> he just chickened out of that plan. Like, it was, I, I, that would've been way better what I was imagining. Anyway, that would've been way better with what I was imagining. He, like, I think he, he, he messed that up big time. Anyway, hello? At lunch break, Agaha and I were called to the staff room. I'm sure we were. It's because we were both absent yesterday. Oh, all right, maybe not. We told the truth and said we were hanging out and got a really severe scolding from our homeroom teacher. Why the hell did you say that? You should have lied. <laughs> Why did you tell the truth? Like, we just didn't want to show up. <laughs> cause like, that's honest, but like, I was about to say, cause you'd get way bigger trouble. Well, that can't be helped. It's a good thing we didn't contact our parents. They didn't contact. <sighs> yeah. Agaha isn't her usual cheerful self this morning. Well, Katori started it, so you're partially- I mean, I would say you're partially at fault, but you're not really at fault, because everything you said is true. And you were a lot more fair than someone who was, like, more pissed- I mean, you were more fair than I even think you had to be. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, considering she was pissed, she was- she still said nothing that wasn't true. So, I-, I that's on Katori, personally. Anyway, I said something terrible yesterday, didn't I? I couldn't stop myself from getting angry. Don't worry about it. You know, Katori understood why you did that. She, actually, she was regretting it too, the fact that she had an argument with Agaha. No, that's not it. I think maybe the reason why I got angry why I got angry was because she was exactly right. And she said that I kiss up to everyone to make them like me. You don't kiss up to people though, do you? I wonder. There are lots of people who I get along with, but right now there are no people that I feel are my close friends the way I do when I hang out with you and the others. I guess that Agaha can get along with anyone, but it doesn't, doesn't feel like there is anyone she's particularly close to. To be honest, I thought that was a little strange. I'm the same. I get along with everyone in the cycle racing club, but I couldn't talk to them in the same way I could talk to you guys. That is a question of time. I hadn't spent the same amount of time with them. Me, Agaha, and the others were each other's very first friends here in this, in this neighborhood back before I can even remember. If there was anyone else who I, could, who I got along with. Idiot, moron, knucklehead. Suddenly all those insults sprang to mind. Do we really get along? I mean, you do. Beneath her soon-drainness and your stupidity it's it's amazing but technically yes it is true that the teacher asked me to do it i was told to make it easy for her to join in with everyone even if you weren't told to you were worried about it katori anyway weren't you that's what i thought that's what i thought but i wasn't sure i could do anything about it in the end, it had the opposite effect. Katori has taken the day off school today, too. Agaha said it was her fault and was blaming herself. This morning, when I woke up, Katori had already left. There were signs that the kitchen had been messed up, and it looked like she had been searching for the withdrawal notice that I hid. Actually, it was in the drawer in my room. It's not your fault that Katori hasn't come to school. Why do you think that? It's not, what, it's not just what I think, I'm almost completely certain. The truth is, I remembered that we were in the hallway of the school and took a quick look around. There was nobody passing, so I didn't have to worry about anyone hearing. Katori wants to quit school. Eh? From a long time ago, it seems like she had decided before I came before I came back here. Agaha was surprised to hear this out of the blue and didn't say anything. Sorette. Then, it's not because she argued, argued with the girls in the class. There's a deeper reason for it. I think that it's also the reason for her recent behavior and attitude. So that's why. She, so that's why she didn't join the soaring club. Yeah, since she was planning to quit school soon, she thought it would cause problems for us. Is that so? So yesterday's argument was because you both misunderstood each other. 
That can't be it. We still haven't cleared things up since the argument. If Katori disappears as things are now, I don't know what I'll do. Agaha takes her unfocused anger out on me by hitting my chest. Ow, ow, ow. You should have told me that sooner, you idiot. I only found out by coincidence. Also, ow, I can't just go around telling other people her secrets, can I? I just picked up the withdrawal notice by coincidence, and I didn't know she was planning on submitting it, and even if she really was really serious about it. I couldn't exactly ask her about it either. But, but... I'm sorry, okay? That hurts. Seriously, stop punching me. Then, I thought that she didn't want to come to school anymore. She hasn't been coming to school, helping with the meal prep at the dorm, and it looks like she was enjoying herself. I just assumed that everything was okay now. On the way home today, I'm going there to apologize. Aoi, come with me. Yeah, sure. I'll give her a hug, dude. She's too cute to suffer. In an attempt to offer some comfort to Agaha, who was now crying, I stroked her head. Attaboy. Attaboy. I was about to say, give her a hug or something, man. She's too cute to suffer. You're way too adorable to feel pain. <laughs> so it's like, you should be exempt from pain. Anyway. Anyway, today is Friday. It actually is Friday. It's funny you mentioned that. I wish it was my Friday. It was the deadline of the grace period for gathering club members given to us by the student council vice president, Akari Kumoi. After school, Agaha and I, and then one other person, went to the Soaring Club garage. The vice president came to see the four of us one by one, including club leader Amane, as we lined up. Uh. <laughs> Kaneko? <laughs> they got Kaneko to show up? That's awesome. <laughs> She's so good, dude. I love Kaneko. She's just like this, like, always there to just back people up. She's like, I hate all of you. A vein was clearly visible on the vice president's temple. Yeah, yeah, you're pissed because we, because we actually found a fourth member. Screw you. Who is this? What do you mean? She's the new member. I'm the new club member, Kaneko Shigure. Rejected. What? What? Please explain. Yeah, yeah. I told you that ghost members wouldn't be accepted. What exactly are you assuming here? This is the tyranny of the student council. Damn right. Yeah, what's wrong, what's wrong with me long, longing for the sky? <laughs> Kaneko is a history of helping other people try to get their try to get their clubs. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. All right, I guess that's that's a pretty solid reason. She's like, look, it's unlikely that this girl actually cares about it because she's done this six other times trying to help other people. Anyway, six previous cases. This person is a repeat offender of acting as a ghost member. She has a history. What? Well, I get, I get bored easily. Sorry, I read that over her, but, well, I get bored easily. That's why I reject it. Come on, it's okay, isn't it? We're in the same class, aren't we? You two are in, you two are in the same class? I guess they are in the same grade. Come on, Akari-chan. Please don't cling to me like that. She gets rid of Kaneko with a flat refusal. It seems like she's used to dealing with her. Any other members? No. In that case, the club status is repealed. Vice President here. Amane sheepishly passes a printed out piece of paper. It was the result of the sewing club's activities that she had compiled. Hmm. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, tone it down. In all those years, you have only flown once, a few days ago. Also, the fact that this occurred during lesson time is an outrage. Yeah, simmer down. You're not aiming to take part in any competitions, you don't participate in school festivals, and you haven't really provided any announcements of your work or research. 
極めて個人的な趣味の範疇ですねこれはいわゆるサークル活動ではありませんか Is this falls into the category of an extremely individual hobby? Wouldn't this be the kind of activity in which a circle could be involved? Would be involved? <laughs> yeah. Amane! You can't just meekly admit it like that. <laughs> It's no good, is it, Vice President? <laughs> Whatever happens, there's a place I'd like to go to. There was something that sounded like a desperate appeal in Amane's voice. A place you'd like to go to? Yeah, that was, that was, that's the girl who starts with an I, or a guy, girl, I don't know who it is, but I promised Isuka. The vice president said nothing as she looked at her, as if trying to figure out the true meaning. That's right. There are only three members, which is not enough. There have been no research announcements. However, However, hmm? you, the vice president looked as if she was about to say something very important and looked behind us towards the back of the garage. Is it Katori? Aha, Katori. There was Katori. She had entered at some point. I have something to give back, she said to Amane. To me? But Katori did not come towards us. Next to the glider, with its sheet removed, she was looking down slightly at something on her lap. Amane walked over to her. What is it? Once this is complete, will it fly, fly above the clouds? Hmm? Kazori looks at the sleek white aircraft. White sleek aircraft, other way around, whatever. And this, she held out the thing that was on her lap, a photograph. Can it go to this place? This is... When Amane saw it, she, her, she was uh, wide-eyed with surprise. This photo, where did you find it? Tears welled up in her eyes. What is it? I don't know. Agaha, Agaha and I walked over there to take a look at the photograph that Katori was holding. It was a photograph of clouds. Clouds! That's, that's some really thick clouds, though, with like three seas. A sunset dyed in indigo and orange. Or was it a sunrise? In the beautifully colored clear morning glow with a huge row of clouds, which looks just like a passage extending across the sky. This must be a, the passage of clouds. Yeah, I told you, dude. Told you, dude. It's beautiful. Yeah. Agaha and I, Kaneko and the vice president, were all fascinated by the miraculous spectacle shown in the photograph. Can it go to this place? Katori asked again. For a moment, I couldn't make the metal co the metal connection between the question and mental not me not metal. Uh, I couldn't make the mental connection between the between the question and the view in the photograph. That was because it was a place too far away to be associated with the word go. Well, not really. This place. Will you go to this place above the clouds? Above the clouds? Both questions. Riding this glider. As I look at the photograph, I envision the white aircraft without an engine flying across the sky that I remember being so graceful, grace, uh, great and solemn. That really was a miraculous sight. All of us, even Akari, held our breath as we awaited for Amane's answer. Can it go to this place? <laughs> yeah, it can go there. She murmured as she took the photograph and looked at it nostalgically. <laughs> That's what is that, that that's what Iska said. She's a genius. Amane, who had until just now had tears in her eyes, smiled happily as she said the name. I want to join too. Okay, really quick. Can I just pat myself on the back? <laughs> so like a day or two ago, I think it was yesterday. Was it was it was it yesterday? It was like a day or two in my last one of one of my last videos. I predicted. I said, what, what What did I say? I said that Katori would show up very last minute on like Thursday or Friday, like at like late, at like right when things were coming to a head, and she would join. That is like verbatim what I said. And what happened? Today is Friday. It's the end of the day. Akari was giving them the boot, and she rolls up and joins. Exactly what I said. <laughs> you could tell I watch a lot of anime. <laughs> anyway.
Regardless, I was right, lols. <laughs> That's if someone like me won't be a burden. She spoke with both fear and a lack of confidence in her voice. However, in her eyes seemed to be a strong determination. With Amane saw those eyes, she answered. Of course, you're very welcome. Hell yeah. Nice. Hey, I met the sky. I yearn for it. Look, it's a new one. Also, movement? Park? What is this? <laughs> a title card? <laughs> like six hours in? Wow, a cutscene and everything. That's Aoi, I assume. Wow, an inch, like, what is happening? <laughs> I mean, hey, is, is, what is this, like, is that, was that the end of it? Like, I mean, obviously there, there's like different routes and stuff, so this is like a preliminary romance at best. Or like a, like a preliminary setting of things, things up, the first act or something. Hell yeah! Wow, it has a theme song and everything. Who would have thought? Wow, this is what falling in love is about, without a doubt. Wow, that was awesome! <laughs> that was awesome. I saw, yeah, hey, you guys can't see it, but I just got an achievement called Movie One. Wow. Wow, that was such a pretty photo, wasn't it? But like, wow. <laughs> like, wh what was that? <laughs> what the heck was that? Was that like, like, was that like a title card? Like, six hours in? <laughs> or like, six and a half hours in? Whatever it's been? Like, or was that like the end of the first act? Like, obviously the Soaring Club is saved, right? So maybe now on, like now moving forward, we can get to the romances and stuff. Now that like, the stage has been set. The crisis is averted. Like, is that what's happening? But like, wow, that was like a title card six and a half hours in. <laughs> anyway, that was awesome though. That was a really great cutscene. It fits like the, the vibe for the whole thing so well. And uh, yeah, it fits the vibe so well. And uh, yeah, and it showed all the characters and a few of them we haven't even technically learned the, learned, learned the names of yet, which is kind of funny. Also like my mic is like covered in schmutz and it's weird because i literally never touch my mic oh i touch it by like the the stem to just move it from desk to desk that's all i do and also i have no idea if you guys can hear my me running my hands on my mic if so i'm really sorry it might be really awful to you anyway i tried to cover up and then i blew on it yeah it's like covered in something what is all that garbage anyway poor little snowball he doesn't deserve that Anyway, sorry, wow, that was awesome, like, nice title card, that was sweet. Great theme song, though, it fits the vibes, it was, that, was, that was really great. Anyway, wow, that was such a pretty photo, wasn't it? So, yeah. Yes, it was. Well, Akari, it looks like you lost. Haha. <laughs> it looks like you lost. <laughs> yes, she is, because she lost. Oh, are you feeling cranky, Akari? <laughs> No, not at all. Of course not. She's perfectly impartial, of c obviously. Katori appeared just as you were about to bring down a rain of pain upon them. They just thought you that you were a nagging, angry kind of person, didn't they, Akari? Don't sound so happy when you say that. I'm the one who accepted this thankless task. I'm the only one who understands you, isn't that right, Akari-chan? Oh man, is there some sweet Yuri vibes going on here? <laughs> Probably not, wishful thinking. Thanks, could you let go of me? <laughs> I 
It's not that I'm in a bad mood or anything. I've just been thinking. Hey, Kaneko. Yes. That transfer student, who is he? He's the dorm mother. Dorm mother? Yeah, he's a nice guy. Have you fallen for him? Don't be ridiculous. He only just transferred here, but he can already handle the antisocial senior Mochizuki so well. I just thought he was very astute, that's all. Wow, she, wow, she, that's surprising. Are you praising him? Yes. Huh. Cute. For now, the number of members needed for the club has been reached and the vice president left the garage. Together with Kaneko. The rest of us continue to look at the photograph that Katori had brought. Such a beautiful sky. But these clouds are a very unusual shape. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen clouds like this before. Me neither. These clouds appeared before you or I were born. Before we were born? What on earth is this photograph? It was a really beautiful photograph. However, it was the same as the pictures in old photo albums, the sort that you have to take to the Photoshop to have developed, and was printed on paper with logos on the back. This phenomenon is known as morning glory. It only occurs under certain conditions. Morning glory? Morning glory? It's a path of clouds in the sky several kilometers long. A path of clouds like this several kilometers long. It's a very rare phenomenon, and the most recent occurrence is 26 years ago. The soaring club members at the time flew in the glider and took this photograph. Wow, so that means this photo was taken in Kazagura? Yes, it was. Was the one who took the photo one of the old members of the club? Yes, that's right. To think that this amazing spectacle occurred right here in my hometown, and the person who took the photograph was a member of the club to which I now belong. Even though the thing that I thought that was so far away has now become a lot closer, it still doesn't seem real somehow. To think that I somehow felt I, I felt something along the lines of, dude, that's amazing. Hold on a sec. Her face looked like she was about to say, I've just realized something really important. What is it? Did you just say that they, they flew the glider and took this photo? Yes, I did. That's what it says in the flight log. So that means Agaha and I take another look at the photograph. If you wanted to take a photograph from above the clouds at the very least, the camera would have to be in a position higher than the clouds. Did the glider actually fly this high? Yeah, she's like, no shit. A little hard to take a picture when you're not in the place that you need to be to take the picture. Well, yeah, the, the physical evidence is right there in front of you. Agaha and I turned to look at the white aircraft. I don't know how many meters it was, and this and this wasn't just imagination. But when I picture actually flying this thing above the clouds, it looks kind of unreliable. Before I came to this school, the soaring club had already lost its status as a club, and all that there was left was the equipment that was in here. The same goes for this photograph. It was also left here. Amane takes the photograph in her hand and squints her eyes with nostalgia. This is where Iska wanted to go. Iska and I wanted to go to this place, and that's why we started constructing the glider. Iska? There's that name again. Whenever Amane says that name, she becomes very nostalgic. Who is this Iska person? Oh no. Um, here. While we were talking, Katori was listening quietly, but then held out a notebook to Amane. I thought that I had seen it somewhere before. It was the notebook with the things I want to do list. 
その写真はこれに挟まっていたの。That photo was inside this. これはイスカの高校日誌じゃないか。This is Iska. どうして君がこれを持っているんだ。Sorry, too fast. This is this is Iska's flight log. How, why do you have this? リオの私の部屋にあったの。It was in the dorm in my room. リオの部屋。The dorm in your room. もしかして君は飛び魚荘に住んでいるのか。Are you by any chance living in Flying Fish Manor? A little surprised to hear that name all of a sudden, Katori nodded. It was hidden in the gap between the shelves. It looks like a diary inside. There are things about the glider and about you written in it. Me? Yeah, maybe. You're Iska's close friend, aren't you? For some reason, Amani didn't answer and looked at the worn cover of the notebook. I read this and then became interested in gliders. Using only its wings, it uses the wind to fly across the sky, an aircraft that is just like a bird. そんなので雲の上を目指すなんてすごいって思った。Oh, sorry. I was like that seemed like really short. Sorry. To aim to fly above the clouds on is something that like or wait, wait, what? Let me let me try that again. To aim to fly above the clouds in something like that, I thought that was amazing. でももっとずっと昔のことだと思ってたから、日記の日付だとイスカたちはもう特に卒業してるはずだし。But I thought it looked. I thought it was much further back in the past. When I looked at the dates, I thought that Iska and the others must have graduated already. I didn't think it would still be going on now. But if you were interested in gliders, why didn't you come to check out the soaring club? I asked in a light-hearted manner. Actually, she was so interested in them that she just looking at the real glider makes her eyes sparkle with wonder. The owner of the diary might no longer be around, though. That's well. Katori held tightly to the hem of her skirt. I didn't think they'd let me join. Katori, listening to her words, I felt a dull pain coming from my right knee, somewhere that she couldn't enter. That's where she believed, and that's why she didn't. That's what she believed, and that's why she didn't want to try to find out about the current status of the soaring club. It might be. It might have been similar to me after I injured my knee and tried to avoid hearing any information about the cycle racing club. The more I knew, the more envious I would become. That's why I was surprised when I saw the glider flying over Windmill Hill. I was so excited I could feel my heart pounding. That was the time that Katori and I first met. In that peaceful landscape, Katori watched the white aircraft flying over with such enthusiasm. Really. When Amane heard Katori's story, she took a deep breath. Can I take a look? Yeah. Amane put the book on the table, but didn't read it straight away, and instead went to boil some water in the electric kettle first. Then she prepared the tea set. When the pleasant aroma of the tea started to fill the air, Amane sat down and finally turned to the first page. Her cheeks went slightly pink, and her eyes seemed kind of nervous. Amane's eyes moved from left to right across the page, slowly, carefully. It felt to me that she was digesting it one letter at a time. She took a sip of the boiling tea. She placed the cup back on the saucer and then turned to the next page. She began to smile. Maybe something fun was written there. She giggled as if she had become lost in memories. The nervousness that was in her eyes when reading the first page had disappeared. She's smiling. Yeah, it was a calm and happy smile. Or so we thought. Oh. Then, looking at the next page, and opened her eyes wide. She opened. Sorry. There must be something surprising written on that page. From the look on her face, she seemed taken aback as she continued to read. After that, Amana's expression continued to change. She turned the pages. She smiled, seemed surprised, looked troubled, appeared to be sulking, then smiled again. Hey, what kind of things are written in there? It's a record of the Soaring Club's activities. Well, I say that, but most of it is just a normal diary. 
大親友とどんな風に毎日を過ごしたかそれが汚い字と読みにくい文章で書いてあった。It's about how Iska spent every day with her best friend. It's written in, it's written in really bad handwriting, so it's hard to read. アマネ先輩の大親友か。Well, if Amane is calling Isuka brilliant, she must be really stinking brilliant. Anyway, Amane's best friend, huh? I wonder what sort of person this guy is. Strange, probably. Freaking got him. Sorry, I spoke a little too soon again. Strange, probably. Playing tricks on people and surprising them, throwing pies in the dormitory dining hall. But when you read it, it had an effect on you, didn't it? Yeah. It seemed really fun. We could tell by the look on Amane's face that Iska's flight log was full of funny stories. It was also proof that the time they spent together was equally fun. When she reached what was probably the last page of the diary, Amane had tears in her eyes. As Amane smiled nostalgically, a clear drop ran down from the corner of her squinted eye. Was something sad written in there, I wonder? But she's smiling. The log stops halfway through. The last thing was written in there was things I want to do. The page that we were looking at. I want to pass through the passage of cloud. Amane mumbled in a quiet voice before bursting into tears, while still smiling. She must have been smiling because she was happy. But then the tears must have been because it was all in the past. Just looking at it made me feel a terrible pain inside, like my chest was closing up. I know! Like, I'm just sitting here reading this second hand and I'm feeling like my feels hurt, dude. Like, thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, like, I wonder what happened to Isika, though. Like, did she, like, was she just older than Amane and so she just graduated? Like, how long ago was this? Like, if her, if Isika and Amane are friends, like, and if they were building the glider together, like, I don't know how old Amane is, but apparently she should have graduated several years ago, but she's repeated, like, the grade as many times as she, as she could. So, like, you know, they they don't say how long that is, but I, and I don't know when what, what the normal graduation age is in Japan either. So it's like, I mean, so she could be late teens, I mean, maybe even early 20s if she's repeated it enough. But again, depending on how old you are normally, like, if you get out earlier than that, she's probably just late teens. So, you know, so Amane, I don't know how old she is, and I don't know what happened to Isuka. Did she just graduate? Like, and then she just moved on? Like, I mean, if they were best friends, and if she had such great memories, why'd she just bail on, why'd she just bail on Amane? Aman, I don't really get the feeling Amane does much else other than this club with this glider. Is she dead? Like, you know, I have so many questions. Like, I have so many plot questions, man. Anyway, after reading the last page, she closed the notebook and then went back to the first page. This is, this is now the third time. Even so, she reads it with the same happy, surpri happiness, surprise, worry, and nostalgia as if she were reading it for the first time. We quietly watched her as she repeated this again and again. The tea that she had only taken one sip from would definitely have been cold by now, but it looks like she had totally forgotten about it. Looks like we have no choice but to leave her to it for now. You're right. There are so many things I want to talk to her about, but it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like now is a good time to speak. Yeah, I kind of think you should just leave her to her memories. Kind of let her absorb this and then maybe we can ask some questions later on as we leave the garage the sky is filled with the colors of sunset with a deeper red than surprise than sunrise the darkness of night approached from the eastern sky the photo of the clouds was really pretty wasn't it yeah will we go to that place Aga seemed to be saying I'm itching to go I felt the same way well then, I'm gonna go show my face at the robot club. I'm in two clubs at once, but I don't go there every day. You don't seem that busy either. It should be okay, right? Even if she is also in another club, it's great that she's here. Sorry for all the trouble. No, it's fine, buddy. Bam! Agaha gives me a punch in the shoulder and turns around to Katori, who had left a little later but was following us. Katori! I'm sorry about yesterday. Uh, Agaha bowed her head with a great mo with great momentum. It's fine. I don't think you have anything to apologize for. I 
I didn't know about your situation. Despite that, I spoke to you as if I knew what was going on. I'm really sorry. Katori glanced at me. She must have realized that I had told Agaha about her wanting to quit school and so on. I'm glad you realized that. Katori gives her head her... turns her head sideways in an aloof manner as she speaks. I storm over towards Katori and... Whack! Ow! Whoa! I gave her a karate chop to the top of her head. What are you doing? From now on, every time you take that kind of attitude, I'm going to give you a chop. Huh? Katori reeled back. Then she looked at me with eyes like a demon or an ogre. What gives you the right to do that? Come on now, you've got something to say, haven't you? Thank you, Aoi. Thank you. He's gonna have to be her conscience because she's like, yeah, serves you right. Like, he's gonna have to like force her to be sincere and say what she really means. He's gonna have to be her anti, like anti Sundre medicine, and and I'm all about it, man. He he'll be the conscience, and it'll work out, I think. I'm sorry. I said too much too. There you go. See, that's what you really mean. It's almost like you should have said that the first time. You don't kiss up to people. You're just kind to the point of being annoying. That's like a backhanded compliment. Don't do that. I'm, she's like, annoying? <laughs> Whack! Ah! <laughs> hey, that hurts, you know. If it didn't hurt, you wouldn't remember. Ah, it's like Rafiki's lessons. I like this. Hey, it's effective, isn't it? Ugh. She looked at me with anger in her eyes as she rubbed the top of her head, did that sideways aloof face thing, and pushed her, or did that uh, sideways aloof face thing, and then pushed her wheelchair along. I'm assuming she just sticks her tongue out. Oh, come on, she deserves it, dude! Like, her like her little Sundre attitude is so annoying. Just, just say what you mean. You don't even mean what you say, the, like, the first time. Like... Just say what you mean, like, my god. <laughs> anyway, not everybody can be super sweet like Amane or Ageha, so I guess it's I guess it is what it is. Wow, Aoi, I can't believe you'd karate chop a pretty little girl like Katori. Well, she deserved it. Uh, Ageha is a little stunned as she speaks. Well then, I'm off now. You'd, you'd better go after Katori. Yeah, see ya. See ya. Ageha, who looks like she's skipping as she walks, turns to head towards the school building. But she stops halfway. Looks like things will be interesting from tomorrow. She called out in a big voice. Hell yeah. Now that's progress. Just they're both silent. I caught up with Katori, who had a meek expression on her face as she quietly pushed her wheelchair along. You want me to push you? No, I don't. I don't know how tiring it is to push a wheelchair along, but if I tried to travel the same distance I would normally walk by using my hands, I would definitely find it tiring. I went behind her and pushed the wheelchair. I said I don't want you to push me. I told you that, I, I told you that I'd help you, didn't I? I'm not going to do it all the time, but when my hands are empty, you can rely on me. But there's no reason to have you do that for me. Yes, there is. What's that, then? Because we're friends. I felt a little embarrassed as I said that. I think that if I hadn't been facing her back at the time, I wouldn't have been able to said that. I wouldn't have been able to have said that. Since when have we been friends? It's just like, well, <laughs> if I had to put a date on it, I would say about the time I picked up the withdrawal notice was a pretty solid time. <laughs> like, since day one, like, or like at least day two, like really quickly, we became friends. The bond is there, even if you want to be a punk about it. Yesterday, we were hanging out, weren't we? Haven't we been... Uh, that means we're already friends, right? That's true, that's science, man. Generally speaking, it wouldn't be incorrect to say so. Katori seems stays tight-lipped and doesn't answer. Of course, she has to be Sundre about the whole I have friends thing. You just gotta look past it. For a while, we don't say anything as we follow the route back. <laughs> He'd be like, I don't have to ask. I already know why. It's because of me. Anyway, aren't you gonna ask why? Why I decided to stay? I don't know if I want to ask or not. The main thing is the fact that you're staying. That withdrawal notice. Could you hang on to it for a little while longer? Sure. So she's not gonna throw it away. 
To me, this place is always like is like the last bastion. I don't know if I could stay here and sorry, with the pause between there was too long, was longer than I assumed. I don't know if I could stay here indefinitely like Amane, but I want to stay a little longer. No, that's no, that's exactly accurate. That's exactly how you look, I would say. But sometimes I lose heart. I may not look like it, but I have a lot of worries. Seems like she's trying to say I may I may be a tough girl, but you just look like a crybaby. If I said that, she'd get she uh, she'd just get mad and so she would just get mad, so I'd keep quiet. That's why I want you to hold on to it. Would that be okay? She suddenly seemed to lose her resolve, and she turns around to glance at me. Why me? The question comes to mind, but I don't say anything. I think the fact that it was me makes me quite happy, to be honest. That's fine, but I have one, but I have one condition. N Nani. What? Katori puts her guard up. She looks as though she thinks I have another crazy demand to make. You talk to me like I'm a stranger. I want you to use my name more. Huh? Huh? You always refer to me as you or him, but I want you to call me Aoi. We're friends now. Uh, uh. Hmm. Would that be a problem? Do you think of it? Do you think of me as your friend? I'm a little anxious as I ask her. No, that's not it. It's just that you. No, I mean, um. Ah, she said it! I was about to say, tack on the coon. I know it's coming. Tack it on. Bam! There it was. Hell yeah! That's familiarity right there. See? Oh. <laughs> it seems weird. Please understand, she seems to say as she bent forward. Katori, why do you find it so strange to say my name? We don't know each other well enough to be on a first name basis. The hell we don't! I, I pulled you out of a bathtub! The hell we don't! We're at least on a first name basis. If not, we're, we're practically on a nickname basis at this point. Well, never mind. Come on, let's go, Miss Habane. It's okay, I don't mind if you call me Katori. Okay, let's go, Katori. Ah, hell yeah! Katori had a look on her face that I indicated a complex mix of emotions, awkward and shy at the same time. We'll definitely go there, above the clouds. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> there are wispy clouds in the sunset sky. From now on, whatever we look up at the sky, we'll be thinking about this. I'm gonna fly. My heart was beating frighteningly quickly. Hell yeah, that was some really quality feels right there. That was awesome. Ooh, Amane. Amane, my love. You want to pass through the passage of cloud, huh? That's what you always said, Iska. It's dark. When did it become nighttime? Clatter. <laughs> She's realizing that, like, time's gone by. My tea's gone cold. Has everyone gone home? I didn't think I'd be able to continue here. Iska, you reached him, didn't you? You brought him here. Oh, I think Iska's probably dead. It looks like I can keep going. Just a little longer, until I reach the end of this summer. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> is that when you're finally gonna decide you graduate and leave? Is that is that what that means? I think Iska's dead. The way that like her diary was left behind and she has all these memories and there's so many feels flying around. I think I think Iska probably died. Maybe doing something club related. Maybe there was another glider. Otherwise, why would they have to build a second one? And and they haven't said. <laughs> Sorry, Katori. One minute. They haven't said there was another one, but like, I don't know. Like I don't know. Like maybe maybe. I mean I I either. Personally, I think Iska's probably dead. And, like, you know, the diary was left behind, and there was a photo in it, and, like, I don't know. I, and then the way the, the way Amane was speaking about her, I think I think uh, Iska is probably dead. And so, like, and so maybe that's why, like, 
for Amane, it feels so important to go above the clouds, like in a glider and finish the glider and like, you know what I mean? All that jazz. I feel like that personally, I think that's why. I mean, it would explain a lot while like maybe part of the reason why she's so shut off is because she's like, nothing else matters other than, you know, fulfilling Iska's last wish or whatever. Personally, that's my guess. And uh, we'll see if that's true or not. That's what I think. Anyway, wow, what a roller coaster. <laughs> My goodness, what a roller coaster. That was awesome. <laughs> Sweet title card though. Like love that. It's like a title card like six out like six hours in. That's awesome. Great little theme song too, so that's exciting. Anyway, but now I think uh, but there's a lot of feels flying around, you know what I mean? There were lots of feels flying around. So personally, I'm wondering if we're maybe approaching our first like Maybe we could start getting the snowball rolling on the relationship front. Nah, huh? know what I mean? So that's exciting. So far, I really like the characters. Personally, just as a, as a character archetype, I find Katori the most, the least fun so far. Um, without knowing the twins, because there is a pair of twins, we haven't really interacted with them very much. But I imagine eventually they will come up and they will be more prevalent, I imagine. Um, but without characters, you know, excluding characters I don't know yet. So far, I find Katori the the most, the, the least likable, and it's not that I dislike her or, or whatever, because I, I do like her. I just find her Sundre uh, really annoying, and it's annoying to have to work past it to get to the, to get to the good stuff, you know? So, uh, so I find that a little bit, little bit annoying. I really like Amane, and I really like Ageha. Um, Amane and Ageha are both awesome, so really, really liking the characters, and I really can't wait to romance them. And honestly, Aoi, even though he's kind of, he's kind of brainless at least a fair amount of the time i really do like him he does a lot that's really really good he put he puts his foot in his mouth sometimes and he doesn't carry through on thoughts like he should like back there with katori but a lot of the time he does do really genuinely good things and he does help out people and he is a genuinely a good guy and i love that he's kind of on this path to healing and finding himself you know kind of bettering himself and katori's doing the same thing and i don't know that's just i love all the realness flying around it's so good Anyway, so I am having a lot of fun, and it's been really, really cool to really get the ball rolling on a lot of the juicy stuff. Now that the stage is set, a lot of the, you know, I mean, everything can start moving along a lot better. So that's really, really exciting. Anyway, so as far as the upload plan for this weekend, so tomorrow is Saturday. I am not planning on recording tomorrow. Um, in the morning, I work. After that, I'm just pl pretty much plan on hanging out with my sister. And when I'm done, I don't know what I'll be doing. I might, I might goof off. I don't know. Um, however, on Sunday is my errand day. Uh, normally, I might move it to Mondays, but regardless, uh, I'm thinking the Sunday in the morning, I have just some light errands to do. But after I'm done with that then I'm thinking that I might record. So there might be videos coming out, like probably sometime on Sunday that would not at all surprise me. And then on Monday, we should be back to normal. So we'll just, you know, we'll just be hitting it again on Monday. So that should more or less be the, be the plan. Um, yeah, that should more or less be the plan. And uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Anyway, that is going to call for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the content today. And we will talk to you guys later.